Well, I think, well, Robbie, my number is one point eight. <laughs> Robbie, yeah. Robbie can speak to that, but uh, I think that she is. She's got that cut to as thin a line yeah. as she can. I mean, she would like to have probably at least two or three motor graders because we we haven't done anything. But what do we absolutely have to have? Have to have. What do we need? We think uh, 1.8. Yeah. But go we ahead. got out of 10, 10 wheel dump trucks saving up on the same year mark. So we're going to get hay and that sun sign and that, that, that made us and just climb and climb. And it's going to come down all at one time. And, you know, the graders are set over saving years so so, so so what's your. It, instead of being to the bone, if we're going to modify this list, what's your what's your number? Well, I went with being to the bone, but if you gave me back to the perfect word, we'll probably about three, four. Let me uh, let, let me pose this question. I'm sure that everything I mean, this has all been looked at, but is there any advantage on certainly that expen really expensive equipment? You're talking about motor graders and dump trucks and those sort of things. Is there any advantage of leasing that vehicle and then working through that process, which will lower our maintenance cost? We did that for a number of years on doing uh, whether it was a purchase and buyback. Right. Market you had a guaranteed price. Market well, when you were a, when you were able to have a very strong resale market, the companies could keep those. You know, we could get them. Use them for a few years, mm -hmm. and they can resell them in the secondary market. Or the, the resale market is used equipment, and it was good for them, good for us. Mm -hmm. We cut our maintenance costs. Um, is that still a, an alternative? Yes, and it would be one that we will look at again. Now, previously, some of the conditions we dealt with said, "This is a losing proposition. We're just going to take it and work it." Um, mm -hmm. So we, but probably 10 years ago, our philosophy from the board at that time was more than lease purchase or, or buy back purchase. What, what's the option of trying to refurbish some of them where it doesn't even cost effective? You know, you're talking about you need a new engine and one or something like that. <coughs> Basically, what I'm getting is it's possible for you the, the cost to go down. I mean, because you're looking at this year, but this process will take place over the next six years. Right? Things could change, the economy could change, grant availability could change. Is it possible? Well, it's possible, yeah. I mean, it's possible that the economy is going to improve, and it's possible that we might get you know, another 50% in revenue. Now, 
whether or not that's going to actually happen in these tough times. Uh, you know, I'm not real sure that we're at a point where that's really realistic. Well, my point in bringing those two together, the equipment and the road, was just to make you aware that when you were looking at 18 and a half, right. what you're actually going to consider. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one was the water and sewer, and we had about uh, we had 16 million in that. Your total project list, Mike, I think, uh, in a perfect world, is about 30, 35. 35. Man. <laughs> no, 2,000. <laughs> tag here or your, your 35 million would be for actual infrastructure increase to the infrastructure. Uh, all, all, all of that is an increase. Increase in infrastructure, mm -hmm. either in capacity based on wood stations or additional line extensions to water and more so. Chairman, if you look in your book, that little sheet that's pulled out at the bottom there, all over in the book, mm -hmm. we'll get tomorrow, um, that's a, a, a list, Mike's list of gotcha. estimations. Okay. It's over in utilities in the very back. Thank you. There you go. Let, let me ask. Let me ask this question. As far as as far as our water <coughs> and sewer capacities now, where we're at, um, the spray field mm -hmm. and all that, um, condition-wise, where are we at with that? Functional capacity, our water usage, are we able to handle that? We're in good shape. From the spray field and you know, the treatment, and all of that's in you know, good shape there. Or Current, currently, um, capacities right now we're probably along the same lines as the bridges, um, where where we need to start looking and start planning, and that's where a lot of the the list that you see that CIP list that takes into account the need capacity that we're going to have to have. Okay. Um, obviously, with growth that has slowed down, um, the, that has given us a little bit of breathing room. Uh, if we were continuing to stay along the same lines as growth in 07, 06, uh, we, would, we would be way behind, but we'd probably be talking about our financial issues either. Well, I mean, I have to agree with you, and I've kind of said all along, is that I don't want us, to, I want the county to be very, very cautious about, um, about how we go with our infrastructure growth. I don't want it to run wild, but I firmly believe that we can't choke it off because we've got to plan for the future. And if we're going to be prepared for when this economy does make a turn, then there's certain things in place that we do have to do. Uh, so uh, we'll be looking at those things real, real close. So that y'all know and think, you want to ask me a question of Mike as to how he compiled either one of their lists uh, and how we reach that. Yeah. 
pay for Mark. Did you have money? Did you have money? And Mike Adams um, has been where potential growth areas are, issues that he is aware of, uh, not so much as commissioners saying, what about this, what about that? And we did have a push by the commissioner several years ago to focus our water and sewer uh, expansion along the Venus Carter. That was a Yes. Uh, I believe that was the page of, page of point. Right. Uh, 